Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Oh, happy Wednesday and happy March, y'all. I hope it's going to be spring soon, wherever you are. I know it's chilly across much of the U.S., but today we're feeling very spring-ish and we are going to be needle felting these cute, colorful fantasy mushrooms. They're a little bit 2D, they're a little bit 3D, and you can wear them as a brooch or a magnet. I'm very excited to share these with you. They definitely brightened my spirits and were inspired by my friend Robin Barrett, uh, who always gives me handmade cards and she sent me a card for Valentine's that said, I have so much room in my heart for you. So <laughs> thank you, Robin, for the inspiration. These are super cute. So today is a live show. Thank you all for joining in. Everything's happening over here in the live chat. You have chances to win fun prizes if you participate in live chat. And if you're watching the replay, thank you so much. You can comment down below and you also get entered to win prizes. So on that note, I have two prizes to give away from last week. For, or the week before when we had our last show for people who are commenting. And those go to uh, Jennifer Ross and Lori Teets. You win the Be Mine goodie uh, that we shared, I think, a couple of weeks back. Congratulations. And we want to say hi to a few people here today. I see our friend Devin in the house, Grandma Gail. Everyone say hi, Grandma Gail. Hi. <laughs> Keeping us warm and cozy all year long is Grandma Gail. Hi to Marianne in Australia, Kimberly in California, Kathy in Washington, Susie in Missouri, and Marjolene all the way in the UK. Thank you everybody for joining in. And you know what? Thank you to everyone for, to, for subscribing. Over the last week or so, we've went over the 50,000 mark. We rarely ask for people to subscribe, but if you don't, consider it. Please do. We're so grateful for you being here. So today for our show, the fairies are all lined up. They have some fibery good to share with you and the first up is the lovely fairy Alyssa. Hi I'm so excited to share with you these fun locks that we have in the shop. Um, this one up here is wild wood and this one down here is wild vine and they both come in one ounce increments. Over here we have the happy spring mix so you get a, a little bit of each of these colors and they also come in one ounce bags. Up next is fairy Anne. Woo! Hey friends, thanks for hanging out with us today. Y'all, we have a brand new fiber. <laughs> it's y'all. Ooh, ah. <laughs> it is called the Bergshaft Batting. It's excellent for needle felting and wet felting. It is a medium coarse fiber, about 33 micron. And uh, staple length is gonna be, it's about like one to two inches, but it's got a really nice crimp. Needle felt very well. Similarly to MC1 and CX2, it's a little coarser, a little more wiry than the MC1, so it's not quite as smooth, but it is excellent. We've really been enjoying working with it for both needle felted and wet felted projects. Anything you want a, a stiff, firm felt for. And so we have a bunch of colors, dyed, undyed. We've got some natural colors as well. Um, that they're all available to explore on our website, livingfelt.com, under the wool section. We are actually gonna be working with this gorgeous color today. This is raspberry, this is lagoon, and this is kiwi. We hope y'all love the Berg Shaft. It is available now, and uh, just let us know how you like working with it. We can't wait to see what you make with it. Next up is Fairy Kayla. Yay! Hey everybody, I have so much stuff and not enough hands, so let me share some of this, these goodies with you. I wanted to share our short fiber bat, um, our Merino short fiber goodie, there we go. So this is our regular goodie. It comes with a nice assortment, I think of 12 different colors in here, equaling four ounces. And if you're like me and you just love pinks and purples just all the time, we do have this Be Mine goodie that is also four ounces in this lovely kind of Valentine's color palette here. This is the fiber that we actually use to bake our Easter eggs here, which is if you're feeling spring vibes definitely not too early to start <laughs> and uh, we do have this as a free pdf available under the learn tab on our website so i did have a super important question for everybody what do you call let me replay to my head here what do you call two fungi that get married 
What do you call two fun guys that get married? Fungus! <laughs> Your daily dose of horny for the day. I'll turn it back over to you, Marie. <laughs> Can I just see a big round of hearts for all of the fairies? Where am I down, Rob? <laughs> a big round of hearts for all the fairies. This is our crew. They make everything that we sell. Uh, they make up, make us laugh every single day. They answer the phone. They answer your emails. And yeah, just provide a lot of fairy good magic around the house. So thank you all for being with me today. My name is Marie, if you don't know me. And today we are going to needle felt some mushrooms. I think that these would look really great on the front of a greeting card, on your refrigerator refrigerator of course maybe in a shadow box or mounted on a frame and I'll also show you how you can turn them into like a little brooch and uh, wear them on your clothes using the same magnet so oh I forgot the magnet pieces we'll grab those uh, we'll have somebody grab those for us when we get to the end so thank you for joining us this uh, project does have a kit I don't know if that was mentioned by the fairies in the beginning but under the description there is a link to the supplies you can get the supplies for this a la carte or you can grab a kit. So we'll just look here real quick at the fibers we're going to be using. And this is the range of colors that come in the kit. You'll get core wool. You'll get some of our signature and well-loved MC1 batting, but you're also gonna get bergschaft in the mixture. So this is the very first time we are combining MC1 batting and another fiber together in a, in a pack. So that is for the Fantasy Mushrooms pack. And um, some of you I know had already downloaded the supply list before we got started today. Thank you for that. All you need is a felting pad. So I am, I have a coming soon, I'm gonna be working on our coming soon uh, felting pad. We have a great collection of some little wool, 100% uh, wool felting pads coming up. I'm gonna be working on that today. And I'm going to be working with the Bergschaff and Core Wool and wire. How about I get some wire? Sorry. <laughs> Who do we have with us, Jordan? We have Jennifer McMullen. We have, let's see, Patricia Roberts Thompson. A couple nice. people who already have mushrooms in the brain too. <laughs> oh, thank you all so much for being here. So uh, all my all my getting ready for the show, or I forget a few key parts. All right. So what you need for this project is just some twenty or 22 gauge wire, either one will work, a needle felting pad, some felting needles, the fiber, uh, a little wire cutter. And we're just gonna jump into it right now. So take your wire and just bend it in half. Let me get this out of the way. Take your wire and bend it in half. Come forward just a little bit. Oh, sorry. Perfect. Okay, bend your wire in half and then just cut it. In the kit, you're gonna get a couple of these wires so you can make it like up to four pairs with this. And um, like I said, I'm using 20, uh, you can use 20 or 22 gauge wire. Both will work very well. And what I like to do is bend it unevenly because I want one a little longer than the other. And you don't really have to fuss with the length, but I think it's about an inch and a half. One side is about inch and a half longer. I always like to take the ends and then just tip them back so in this case, they're gonna be buried under the mushroom cap, but it will keep them from poking you while you're working. And then just fold them under and give them a pinch. We will pause for questions too in a moment, but most of this, if y'all have been felting with us at all, this is gonna be super easy. And if you're brand new, I promise this is a great beginner project. Right here at the very end, just pinch those guys together and then give it about just a couple of twists. It really doesn't need that much. You can combine it, uh, or twist it more if you want. It depends on how much separation you want between your two little mushroom stems. The reason I like to use the wire is it makes them a little more poseable. So let me get a couple of these guys in here. Can we see these sort mm -hmm. of? Okay, so you can make them a little more poseable if you put the wire in and give them, you know, maybe just a little character or a little interest. And that's why I want to give them wire. And then also the backs are gonna be flat. So that's what makes these kind of interesting. I'll put those up there for you to see for a moment. Okay, the first thing we want to do is to start covering our piece with core wool. It doesn't matter whether you have batting or roving. This is our CW1 core wool. And you know, the batting looks like this a little bit thicker. The only difference is how it comes prepared. So tear off a long strip 
And this does not take very much fiber at all. It's one of those projects that has a lot of punch with just a little bit of, a little bit of fiber. I like to work with very thin lengths and this is because it gives me a lot of control and keeps, uh, allows me to create a really firm structure, whatever you're making. So I'm going to start at the bottom here and we're going to wind this long stem first and just give it a couple of twists. Tamara says she loves felting mushrooms, happy to learn a new design. Yeah, I was working on something and found that I wasn't overly inspired. So I looked at the card my friend Robin gave me of mushrooms and this just made me so happy. <laughs> okay, so wrap it around and notice though, if you're just starting that I'm holding this very tight and the wool can extend off the bottom a bit, but you don't want it to get squirrely. So if it seems like it does, just fold it over. I call this like the cotton swab tip and it blunts the end of the wire there. So wrap this a couple of times and notice that we're holding tension and twisting the wire. This allows us to keep it very, very tight. And then when you kind of get up here to the Y, you can switch directions, but don't lose your grip. So keep the tension and use these two fingers to pinch as you twist. If you pinch uh, and keep it all together, notice it's not coming loose. If you let go, it's going to come loose and then you're going to have too much air to needle felt through. So go all the way up to the tip and then honestly just wrap yourself all the way back down. Do whatever you can just to hold tension and build up bulk. You don't want these overly thick um, but they end up being about the thickness, one like about the thickness of a pencil and one about the thickness of a marker. So you can, when you're comfortable with doing a couple of layers, uh, if you don't want it to be too thick, you can just tear it off or you can go back up and wrap one layer around this guy. And notice that it all kind of holds in place. So you can do one leg or one leg at a time or both. It's totally up to you. And when you get to the end of a piece, a strip of fiber, seal it off by you know ro rotating it between your fingers and then before you let go bring in your felting needles and tack her down for this i like to use at least a 38 star or spiral um, you, you can also use a 38 triangle a 36 triangle sorry not a 38 a 36 triangle a 38 star a 38 spiral you want something that'll really compress this fiber and this is an inner layer. I want you to put one more at least layer on top so it can be a little ugly. It can be a little, you know, have holes, meaning puncture, being able to see the puncture marks. It can look a little rough and ready. What you really want is everything laying down. So if you have trouble with breaking needles, just go at an angle and don't go straight in. You want to go at an angle but you wanna do that both directions, meaning like say from the bottom to the top and then from the top to the bottom. So work the whole thing in several passes until you get all of this wool compact. You don't want it to be loosey-goosey on the wire. You want it to be very compact. And continue wrapping uh, and build up another layer. So let me jump to one. Uh, here's an example of one um, this is one that's been needle felted, just doing one strip, and I hope you can see that it's, it's fairly smooth, it's compact, and you can go this route and do one and make it perfect, and then add to this one. And um, why don't we do that real quick? If you go this route, then start here. Whenever you terminate your fiber, start right here on the butt again, and whenever you start a layer, pause and make sure you anchor it. We have a couple people asking, how long of a wire did you start with? Oh, this wire is, I want to say it's a 16 inch wire. I have to measure. These are, this wire is custom made for us. And I don't know whether it's a, off the top of my head, whether it's a 16 inch. These I believe are, these are a 16 inch wire. So we have 20 gauge and 22 gauge and it's a 16 inch wire. But for the mushroom, you cut it down to? I cut it in half. Okay. Yeah, I cut it in half. So each pair will be half that. So an eight-inch strip to start. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now you see how I anchored this. Just come up here 
And then you can bend this little stem out so that it doesn't get in your way. And then just make this one the same way. Twist and wrap and twist and wrap and needle felt until you get this one the thickness that you want. Um, Deborah says, such a great idea to make the stem on both mushrooms at once and MC1 is the best. I'm so happy you like it and I know that, you know, MC1 is our favorite fiber, of course, made by us for felting and we have had some restrictions on it this year. We're still working on that issue that's caused us to sort of slow down production, but we wanted to take this opportunity to uh, show you this new fiber and we're going to bring in more fiber for you to felt with this year and more goodies, I promise. Man, we have so much to share with you. So um, I'm going to show you this Bergschaft in, in a minute and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Um, let's see. Okay, so needle felt this until you can stop on this one, the base on any shape and we can build it up later. You just want all of this to be nice and condensed and firm so that as we go on to needle felting the mushroom caps, it's not loosey goosey. And I really can't emphasize this enough. I see often that um, folks are maybe rushing to finish a project, but if we can run our fingers across it, if I can pick fibers off, Think of it as not think of it as not being finished. If you can grab little fibers and rough it up, if you're afraid that handing it to someone, it's going to get it's going to get roughened up, then it's just not felted enough. So keep felting until everything is firm and laying down. We want these projects to be very smooth um, and to wear well. If you know what I mean, if you wear it as a brooch, you could put this on a hat. You could put it on the refrigerator as a magnet. You want it to hold up. I was thinking it might be really cute hanging from your reverse, your mirror in your car. Oh, <laughs> I don't really hang anything from my mirror, but I thought if it were two sided, it would be cute if you did the, you know, the mushroom cap both ways. So needle felt that until it looks like this. And this is still a little rough, kind of ready to go back over with a, um, with a fine felting needle. So I'm working with, like I said, 38 star spiral, um, 40 triangle if you like, and I always like a 42 triangle for finishing. Now, to make the mushroom caps, the way I like to do it is to make a little bed. And I, you know, I think there's lots of shapes. So these are two different shapes. This is like a triangle cone. This is like a dented triangle. This is just a standard rounded mushroom cap. Have fun with that. Um, making whatever shapes you want. I think there's a lot of creativity that can happen here on these guys. But what I like to do is just start a little bed of core wool by pulling it and tearing it. And make it, uh, go ahead and give it a little bit of density. And then what we're going to do, you can use two needles or one needle, whatever you're comfortable with. Let's see. Um, and then what we're gonna do is just needle felt it sort of flat and now start to shape it the way you want it. So let's say I'm going to make a triangle-ish. So I just start to shape it with my fingers to make like a triangle. I always make one bigger and one smaller, but you can do whatever you want. You can have three mushroom caps. These ends that I get loosey, then I'm going to fold them in because we don't want them to trail out for days. Now, I'm not trying to attach this to my, my felt pad. That is happening but we're gonna peel it off in one second. So don't go so far that you can't take it off. And you can put a piece of felt in between um, if you want a little barrier. So kind of get it to the shape you want, peel it off, turn it over, and now keep needle felting it. Sometimes you'll find that when you use a pad like this to needle felt onto, that the bottom side is a little bit more smooth and compact than the top side. And I think that's like part of the magic. Okay, so we have this basic shape and really that kind of roughness is perfect. You don't need to go too far. We're gonna put this guy on that guy. And before I do anything else, I'm just gonna needle felt through the fibers on my stem to this under pad, if you will. And then you can make another one. And I'm gonna go with this kind of triangular shape. Uh, make another pad and put it right over top. So if you wanna make all your pads to start, you can, um, or you can just you can just pile fiber on here and needle felt. For the essence of time, I decided just to pre-make a pad. 
So now I'm going to needle felt these two together and basically sandwich my stem between them. All of these loose fibers underneath, so peel it up, turn it over, do the same thing and attach these two and start to shape your mushroom cap. Like if you want it to be shorter, go ahead and put it up here. Uh, you guys are asking about the, the felting pad. Um, these are like ironing pads, but what I will tell you is this. We have had custom pads uh, made for you. They're, some of them are still on the boat and some of them are here. They're not on the website yet. I have a special combination that we're bringing in and these are the ones that are non-stinky. So some of the ironing pads, I have a number of iron, wool ironing pads myself and some of them just stink to high heaven. So I have been working on this project actually for months and we're going to have uh, these little felting mats for you, but there's gonna have something different that nobody else has. There's a couple of little uh, features we're gonna have available um, for you for your needle felting. So they're coming very soon. Um, I'm sure they're sitting off the port of Los Angeles right now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But they're on their way and they're going to be here in a red hot minute. Um, okay, someone says pipe cleaners. Yes, pipe cleaners would be a little bendy for this project. I wanted something a little more firm. Now, this part, t building up the under mushrooms does take a little bit of time. Um, so have fun with that. Watch something entertaining or listen to something entertaining while you're, while you're doing that because you want to build up your under mushroom to have a really nice shape. We're going to cover all of this and what I like are for mine to have a little bit of mound. Can you see like a little bit of mound right here and a little bit of dimension to them? So they have uh, they're not just flat. That's really kind of what's key. So once you have your under mushrooms built up here, we're going to add some density right on top. One way to do that is just to pile the wool on top and you can also take a little shape like this and roll it between your fingers. You'll find that rolling is harder almost to roll it this way than to roll it across your fingers here. If you roll it across your fingers, you can build up some density and then I like to kind of put that right there. If this is too long, then you can tear it off before you go too far. But we're gonna build up our density right here first, and then we'll put another amount of wool over the top. So this will start to give us some shape to our mushroom cap. Sam Cavanaugh says they would look good as like a bag charm or a key ring. <laughs> oh yeah, a key ring. Yeah, especially if they were tiny, tinier for a key ring, I think for sure. But for sure, putting them on someone's gift would just be delightful. Yes. Okay. Build up this density and shape your mushroom caps how you want. And this is the part where I do all of the bulk building underneath. And if it's easier for you to hold, let's see, hold a couple of needles than do. I'll grab two needles here. If it's easier for you to hold a couple of needles um, or to use a little, um, a little cluster tool or something like that, then do. But shape your under mushroom until you're happy with it. Or if I have one that's kind of ready. Um, so let me jump over. I'm going to jump over here to a different, a different shape. And here's a little pair that is a little uh, further progressed. And you can see that this one is a little more bulbous and this one is a little more rounded. And the only difference between these two is going and taking the time to shape all of the edges. And I really do use my felting mat. If you just have like our normal foam at home and um, the wood is get the wool is getting embedded into the foam, then take a little piece of fabric or a felt sheet and put it underneath so that it doesn't go into the open cells of the foam. And this will help you start to sort of, I feel like you're shaping the edges down um, to be, become flat with the surface. And that's gonna make it lay really nicely on a flat surface, like a refrigerator, like a coat lapel, like a hat. So you get the shaping going this way and then we'll scoop in and shape those edges. Looks like we're buffering a little bit. 
Okay. Might have a slow connection a little bit. Have something to work. Well, we'll keep we'll keep going if it's if it's not seeming too jumpy. Then um, because the recording usually ends up being okay at the end. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep going if there's some buffering. We'll do our best to keep with that. Okay, so I've been shape tapering this like down to the flat surface, but occasionally you'll need to peel it up and then turn it over and go around and shape all of these edges, shape them in and get them nice and clean. Now this is really important to go around and needle felt from the back. You're, you're gonna find that if you only needle felt from the front, the piece stays very loose and doesn't really build up the density that you want. Remember, I'm always saying to the middle, to the middle, to the middle, and even if you're needle felting a, two, a small piece like this and you feel yourself going back through the project, you're gonna find that you'll start to build up density quickly if you come to the back and needle felt through to the front. So flip it over a few times and needle felt, um, needle felt forwards and backwards. Someone's asking me, do I think that the green soy mat would work better than the Earth Harmony foam? You know, give it a try. Give it a try if you have that. The green soy mat is a soy-based product uh, made here in the U.S. for us. We do, it is flat like this and thin. It's only, has one working side. Um, but try and give it, give it a try and see how you like it for that. It's like a little self-healing mat, but I would still consider putting a piece of felt sheet over it to, so it doesn't grab last fibers. Okay, so this is the important part. Get the shapes underneath how you want. Needle felt from the front and the back until you really start to feel it get dense like this. This is nice and dense and it's nice and smooth. Now for decorating the top, this is the Bergschaff. Um, this color is the Bergschaff that Anne showed you. And um, it's going to look a lot like our MC1. It's different. They're from different continents. They're very different microns. This one is a little more wiry and a little more coarse. This is our MC1 batting. It's a little bit finer and a little bit smoother, but they, they're going to work the same. And in order to make these coverings, uh, I get my mushrooms all shaped how I want them. And actually what I'm going to do is make this one maybe, I'll make these two just a little bit different. So we're going to peel our bat to get a thin layer. You don't need the whole thing. You don't need the whole thickness. I'm going to make it so that it more than covers my mushroom cap. So I, I just take a little more than I need. Then I am going to... Then um, I am going to take this raw edge under here and I'm going to put it up here on the mushroom cap. So to get this nice clean line, we take this up here and we're going to fold this back just like that. And that you can see where it's going and you're going to find your way underneath with your felting needle. So I just kind of, hopefully y'all can see this, I kind of find the corner underneath here and I'm going to needle felt basically a little arch. So I'm going from bottom to bottom. You might miss it, you know, you might miss it. You might have to go back, you might fix it, but we're gonna add fiber there underneath in a minute. So now I have a pretty nice clean line. Does that show up okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so right there, now I'm just gonna tack it down gently everywhere else to kind of get it to stay. And I really like to use my finest needle for this part and to be patient, meaning it takes a little bit longer to do than if you, you can get it down faster with a coarser needle, but it's going to show. So wrap it around to the back as much as you want, you know, cover the back as much or as little as you want. And then of course, I always just rip it off a little bit if I need to. But let's fold it over to, so we can tear off the bulk that we don't need and then we'll smooth out the front. Donna says she's not normally a big mushroom fan, but she likes these, <laughs> I'm glad. I don't know what it is about mushrooms now, I just love mushrooms. Now I'm just pulling this off. Save all these little bits, because this is treasures, right? You wanna save it for later. And then just needle felt all this down so it's nice and flat. If you don't want the backs, if you don't want to use your wool on the backs, you don't have to. I think you could cover the backs of these with felt if you want. 
Um, oh good, Ginger likes the mixed colors. I wasn't sure how y'all feel about that. But I'll, we'll, sh we'll look real quick at some shading too. We'll, we'll jump to that. So now I'm gonna leave the back rough for a minute. Let's jump to the front. It's already looking pretty sweet. Um, if you haven't worked with our MC1 batting, what you'll notice is MC1 batting does sometimes have some visible vegetable matter in it. Uh, it is a US fiber. We do not carbonize it, which burns out vegetable matter, and most commercial fibers do. Um, but if you get a little piece, just pick it out of the surface layer, no problem. Now, right here under this mushroom cap, we don't want to leave that loose, although we do have a beautiful line. And if you want it to have a nice ridge and keep that ridge, well then just needle felt right into the poofy part while you have it. If you want it to have dimension and have like a, a lip under it, like an eyelid does, then needle felt right into it to start. You can always add more fiber, but what you want to do is needle felt this down so that it lays, lays nice and flat. I call this like I could do this just all night is just smooth out the mushroom caps. I just do that for two hours and I like to just kind of geek out and do that. The way to get rid of needle marks, the way to make this piece smooth is to take your fine needles and compress all the sticky uppy bits. So remember that it's not so much that you're getting rid of the holes as you're making sure all the fiber that's sticking up gets compressed as far as you can so that it's level with the compression of the holes. Now, if you do compress it all the way and you still see some needle marks, well then you can just go over it and flick it with your needle. But this one has, you know it has a lot to go if you can move it with your finger. So that is key. And you can use multiple needles. I usually have my little multi-needle tool, which I don't have. I usually rubber band three or four of these together. And then what I do is just gently press, press, press very small compressions um, and tack it all down so that it gets nice and level. So that's just a process of patience and diligence. Um, and Suzanne, Suzanne likes the colors of our mushrooms, super fun. Now you can, we can tie these two together and please keep in mind this one has a ways to go, but we can tie these two together with a little bit of blending. So why don't we do that just for fun? Let's blend a little of the orange. This is Coral MC1 and this is Raspberry Bergschaft. Are we still, are we still buffering? People don't really like it. A little bit? Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm just blending. Notice all I did was stack this, stack this, and blend this. I did about a 50-50 uh, ratio. Devin says it's doing okay now. Okay, so I'm just getting a little bit of color here. Now, it's not going to make much of an impact on this, but it's going to be really fun over here. So what we'll do is make ourselves a little blend, and then we'll just stretch it across the bottom of this guy right there. Stretch it. I see a little bit of vegetable matter in there, that's fine. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm not stretching it so that the fibers are pulled taut. If you pull them taut, you're going to see a line, but if you just kind of stretch it and then lay it down, then you can gently, using a fine needle, not a coarse needle at this point, using a fine needle, if you just kind of tack it down in place without stretching it out, it'll look really nice. And you can, you can by I mean stretch it, I mean don't pull it taut when you needle felt it down just lay it where you want it and then tack it into place. And another thing I like to do is sort of go at this angle with my needle. And if it looks like we get a line here, we can blend that also. So this is the way you might tie a couple of colors together for your fantasy mushrooms. I would do the same thing if I'm darkening, like on this blue one. I just added a darker shade of blue um, to an orange or red. You could add brown and that would make it look a little more shadowed and cool looking actually. We did that on our 2D mushrooms a couple of years back. Now, when you're blending here, notice like right here, we sort of are getting this little line. Stretch it around to the back side so that, you know, pull it off and just move those fibers where you want them so that they ultimately do what you want. You don't have to live with lines that you don't love and you can do more blends and wrap it around the back side. And then up here, we're kind of getting a line that we don't love. Well, you can either get rid of it, like by pulling it out and tapering it out a little bit more, you know, blending it out a little bit more, or you could just drop another patch of something that you do like over the top. Oh, I'm glad you guys like it. 
Pamela says she thinks she has the supplies to make these. <laughs> I love that. That's fun. <laughs> That's really fun. Now this one needs a lot of work. So usually what I do is after the show, after the live shows, I go home and I finish what I didn't finish on the show. But for the sake of interest, I think you can see where we're going with this, what we're going to do. Let's add a little character underneath. A couple of things you can do, you might see here that some of my raspberry fibers are showing, no problem. All you have to do is take another pinch of your core wool, and I didn't use white, I just used core wool. And if you want it to be more dimensional, well then do the, do the same rolling thing that we did a minute ago, and add bulk and not just a flat layer. Totally up to you. Um, you can add individual gills if you want, but I decided that I was looking for more I wanted to give you a project that I thought was very giftable um, and would also sell well at probably a craft show or fair that you could do. If you put all these individual gills, well then you're going for more the, um, not fine art, but more, you know, higher craftsmanship level for something a little more expensive. But if you want something that you can make fairly quickly and gift or sell or display, this would be a simple way to do the gills. So just tacking another round of the, M the core wool on top. This is our CW1 core wool, if you're not familiar with it. Um, it's also a USA fiber, it's about 26 micron, and um, it needle felts really fast. It's just nice and easy to work with. Okay, now, uh, the bellows. Is that what they're called? The bellows? Maybe that means the gills. Is that the same yes. thing? Um, I don't know. I don't know all the mushroom parts. <laughs> there's the front door. There's the <laughs> chimney. Aren't those mushroom parts? The window, the garden. Mushroom parts, you know. Okay. Now, uh, this part underneath, and again, I would refine and smooth it. This part underneath, if you get the kit with us, you're going to get a little fibery goodness pack. Um, otherwise, if you don't get that, then just grab a little piece of brown wool or whatever you want and all I'm doing here is pulling out a little bit of brown and I'm just spiraling it from I usually just pick like one point here this would be a good place to have your scissors so let me grab my scissors go I just kind of spiral sort of from the center and I'm sure some people are better at this than me and have a more technical way of doing it something that looks more realistic, but these are fantasy mushrooms, so. I think you can get away with a lot on a fantasy mushroom. So when I get up here and I'm done, I'm just gonna terminate it with a snip. And you can make these as thin or as bold as you want, so making them thin, you know, like more of a suggestion is fine. All I do is anchor one end and then spiral out. You can make this more dimensional too, so if you want to um, get your coarse needle in here first and drive some really deep lines so that these pillow a little bit more, that's another approach you might take. I didn't really want that, I just wanted the suggestion of gills underneath. Um, I think these would make a nice teacher's gift, I think they would make a cute Mother's Day gift. Um, I really do, I think. They're just sweet overall. Okay, so you get the idea here. This is how we're gonna spiral all of these out. Now for the, now what is this part called? This little lacy part. I don't know what it's called. Is that the bell? What, I just feel like it's part of the cap that's like, as it explodes open, that peels back. The I don't know neck. what it is. It's the <laughs> turtleneck. Okay, for the mushroom turtleneck, super easy. It's as easy as you think it would be. All you're going to do is take a little tuft of your, um, core wool or whatever wool you're using on your stems. We're going to uh, needle felt it down a little bit on your pad. Again, if you're using your foam, we'll then bring this guy in. Um, bring in a little topper. Um, bring in a little topper there so that it doesn't attach to your foam. And then what we're gonna do is just fold back one edge. One edge, just like that. Don't attach it to this felt piece underneath. Take it off loosen it and go back. So what we want is one clean edge, clean-ish, you know, I mean, this is a mushroom, so. Um, turn it over and do the same thing. 
If you really don't want any fuzzies at all, then you know take your time on this or bring out your scissors and trim it once you have it well felted. But what we want to do is take this up just about a quarter of an inch and you want to leave these sides undone because you only need it to wrap just around the stem of your mushroom. Uh, Dale asks what colors are in the kit. Dale, the kit right now has all of these colors in it. So it's the coral, it's the, oh sorry, it's the coral, the blue, the red, the purple. Two shades of blue, coral, red, blue, purple. So, and the bear, in the raspberry. Yeah, it has those colors in it. Okay, so here we are with our little thingamabobby that's on the mushroom stem. Someone's gonna tell us what that name is. <laughs> Um, the turtleneck, yes, okay. So here's what we do, we have this and I'm going to, we don't need too much of this bulk here, so we'll tear off anything that's a little extra. And then this is just going to lay right up here. And what I wanna do is I'm going to use this area right here to anchor it so that all of this stuff is laying down. So just pick the smoother side to be the outside. And then I'm just going to needle felt it right into there, loose bits and all, and then you can just gather these loose bits back down and tack them, tack them down. I think this can be a little frilly. Um, you can shape this a little more on your felting pad if you want before you put it on your mushroom, but I find you can also shape it after you put it on. So you kind of get it on there, and I don't necessarily want it to all be straight, so I'll start to shape it after I get it on so that it feels a little lacy, a little roughly, a little uneven, and just have fun with that, you know? You see, if you, if you leave it, if you make it bigger than you need, then you can get these little folds in it. DV says it's called a ring or a skirt. Oh, okay, so the mushroom skirt. Yep, okay. <laughs> the mushroom ring or the mushroom skirt, that's perfect. Yeah, so if you let that be a little bit bigger, then you can get those sort of roughly, roughly, bits in your mushroom ring. And then I just tack it all back. So here in the back is where it's going to terminate. And it doesn't really matter what it looks like in the back. You don't want it to be loose if someone's gonna wear it as a brooch. You wanna just go ahead and needle felt that flat. So get that all tacked down. And then you can add accent colors to this if you want, or you could have done it flat. Like so on mine, I went back and added a little brown right over this part and it hides the little ruffly bits that you put, the loose bits you know, that were there as we were attaching them. And if you want, you can add a little bit underneath also. And I think it adds a little bit of depth if you do, just a little bit of brown. And I think lots of colors will work but you can just tuck it up under there without going all the way through. You don't, don't really want it to stick up to the other side. And I think you could dirty up the, you know, the mushroom stem also, but in the kit, and what I wanted to do with this was add what we call like our mossy goodness on the bottom. So right here, we've used a combination of fibers and we're including these combinations in the kit so that you can make them like a complete thing. I think that's what was missing from 3D mushrooms I made many years ago, and we do have a video for that. But we added this to our 2D mushrooms, which I did bring on this set, and I'll grab those in a second. So here, what I like to do is maybe take a lock or a portion of a lock. We have some locks. This is what was gonna, is gonna come in the kit. We have a little bit of hemp which I think is just so sweet. Perfect for this. We have some sorry silk waist, and we got a great message the other day from someone who's like, how do I work with the stuff? It's just in a knot. <laughs> what do I do with it? And our answer is that you cut it. <laughs> That's our answer. To work with this stuff, this, this stuff that is sorry silk waist, you just cut it. So we just want some texture for our little mushrooms. Sometimes you can tear it apart, but sometimes you gotta cut it. You're gonna get some, um, this is Tessa Silk, brown. You're also gonna get some neps. I'm gonna use brown in mine, and that's what these little bits are. And I think that's about it. Oh, there's other stuff in there. It looks like maybe there's some other stuff, but there's some brown merino top in there too. So this is what I'm going to use. Oh, I'm sorry, with one extra thing is a hanky. You'll get a piece of a hanky. So that's what I build the initial bulk on. So for this, what I'm gonna do is just take enough to kind of cover the end of my mushroom cap. And if you like all these fibers, um, let me know. 
this is just like part of the fun right here of felting as you get to work with all these really delicious fibers. So this is a silk hanky which comes from an, uh, a cocoon, a silk cocoon, and then it's stretched into a big square and then dyed. This is what I like using for the base and I like using the ruffly bits. So I'm just going to nest my little mushroom in there and you can just needle felt that on. And I like it to be a little bit loose, meaning uh, the top. I like to be able to see at least some of that top up there because the edges are just so wonderful. So kind of tack that down and we'll come back and do the whole thing. Now the neps are the hardest thing to anchor in place and we're gonna put them a little bit on top. I want some mossy grassy stuff kind of coming up the back and you can decide is it all on one side or you know how do you want to have it. I'm gonna have it here like this and it'd be like a little backdrop. Always you can always add more or add less it's totally up to you and I'm just gonna tack it right on there. All this stuff you really do want to anchor it on well. Uh, you might just be getting your place at first but anchor it on and feel free to use a coarse needle this is a 36 triangle and really just drive it all in there don't break it on the wire but anchor all this stuff in there so it's not sticking off okay then uh, this is some tussa silk as I mentioned you can add that too if you want you can also uh, fold this in the middle and get a little I think I, I want to put it almost like across hmm, I'll put it right there Okay. Don Ward says it's so cool how they looked like they were just pulled out of the ground. <laughs> it's so fun. Yeah, Amanda says what? She made tiny mushrooms in glass bottles with green locks with them for moss and they were really cute. That does sound cute. Now I love this, this gold. This is the Sari Silk Waste in Gold, but I also liked the gray, how the gray kind of anchored it a little bit. You know, it gave it a little depth and um, I just put the gray off to kind of one side. So what's fun about this stuff is you can just put it where you want it. Let it do what you want it to do. And now for the neps, and I want to get, I want to get some neps in there. Neps are little felted bits of wool. These are actually merino wool and what you find is they don't, they're very difficult to get to stick. And on a 3D project like this where you can't needle felt them from the back, what you can do is take a little bit of the brown, or you could also use it, you know, a brown hanky if you have it, but you can try and stretch a little bit of fiber across it, and you're gonna lose some visually, but you're gonna still get the idea. So stretch a little web across, and then try and trap them down with the fibers, any fibers that you have going over the top. They are difficult to get to stick because they are already felted. So I say, put on more than you need, <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that some are going to fall off. Yep. Okay. There we go. And that to me is just so fun. You can fix it any way you want it. I really like the locks coming to sort of one side and this this mushroom needs work and needs and needs finishing. You might want something a little more forward. But let's say you're finished like with one like this. So this is one that I've already finished. And now what I want to do is finish it or, or mount it on something. What I did was and I oh they brought me a magnet. The fairies are magical. Thank you, um, gals. So this one I turned into a magnet. You can tell because it will stick to my scissors here. But I, these are magnets that you could use as a pin back but won't ruin a sweater, if you will. So they are magnet. They'll stick to your refrigerator. They'll stick to whatever you want. And you can cover these pieces with felt if you want. But I think this, this right here would sell beautifully and would be a wonderful gift too. So um, for this, really all you need is your glue gun, and I don't want to ruin my, my little felt pad here, so let me get this out of the way. Get your glue gun, and what I would do is take, there's two parts to these magnets. We do carry these in the shop. There is the magnet part, and then there's just the little bar part. These work great on a lapel or on a hat or any for any blouse that you don't want to ruin. And what I would do is glue, so this one I can see is um, the stem could use a little bit more girth, but I'm gonna glue it on here anyway. 
because uh, let's see if it will show. It'll show, it might show a little bit and then I can always add, it'll show. It'll show, it might show a little bit and then I can always add a little bit to the top of the stem here if you feel like yours isn't thick enough. Let's see if this one is thick enough. Maybe this one is. This one is a little, this one is a little more beefy um, and I don't think you'll see it. So let's put it on the blue one. And I would consider applying the glue to the mushroom instead of just this, but you can, you can do both. Um, where's my glue gun? My glue not coming out. I used it already, so I'm out of glue. <laughs> well, <laughs> I used my, uh, I have to push it. I, I have a glue stick. Oh, I know where it is. Hold on, I have it. Sorry, I'm prepared. I'm prepared, really. I came prepared. <laughs> I made sure to grab a glue stick before I left the house. Okay, there we go. Oh, I'm putting it on this one, yes. Okay, and well, I'm just gonna put it right there on my mushroom. So let that dry, and if you need to beef up the front of your mushroom, you can. But we, we have these little uh, magnet backs in the shop, um, if you like and they're just a great quick way. Now you can sew a pin back on them if you want. I don't personally like to put a pin through my clothing because I'll, I'll <laughs> always end up tearing it, but I think a magnet is a great way to, to back this. Um, or of course you could even just mount them in a shadow box or something. So I'm interested to see what everybody does with this. There's a lot of good ideas floating around. We've got adding like uh, a little fairy or a little gnome, Aww. adding a ladybug, and Marjolene Wolverson wants to turn the mushrooms themselves into characters. Oh, how so cute. cute! And Colleen said they would look great on a purse. Oh, I mm -hmm. think that is a great idea. Someone asked me about my glue gun. I should probably link to this in the description. I have this ray gun. I've, I've I've had it and broken a lot of glue guns. I like that it has an on off switch. I like that it doesn't drip. And I like that the stand hasn't broken yet. <laughs> Notice I said yet. <laughs> but it does have an on off switch and it doesn't drip. So you can just turn it on and it doesn't give me any problems. But I hope you guys have fun with this. This is really a fun little project. I think it's great for spring. Uh, if you try the kit, then like you'll be the first people to ever get uh, you know MC1 paired with another fiber, in this case, the Bergshop, and I think you're gonna like it, for especially if there's a color of MC1 that you can't get. Are we standing now? Uh, that if, especially if there's a color of MC1 that you can't get, you can try a similar color in the Bergshop. And we're starting something new with our fibers. I'm just gonna tell you right now while we're on the Bergshop. So what you're gonna see on the Bergshop and now on the Merino top is you can buy it uh, by the ounce, when you can buy fiber by the ounce. These are both available by one ounce increments. And we also have bulk discounts available. They're right there on the website. So check that out. The Bergshop I think is on sale right now. The kit, I think, also uh, is available, and all you have to do is click the um, description, link in the description of the supplies. But hey, listen, one more thing. We have a birthday party next week, so mark your calendars. Wooly Wednesday is going to be a birthday party. We're going to give away a ton of prizes. If you have a friend that's interested in felting, invite them to come. We're celebrating turning 18 this month. 18 years old and uh, we're celebrating all of you wonderful YouTube followers and all of our BFFs. We're going to have a really big party. So wear your party hat, watch our Facebook page, make sure you sign up for our newsletter, go to our website, sign up for the newsletter, um, join our school, follow us on Instagram. All these things are going to qualify you um, to be entered into the drawings, but you got to come back to the live show. But today we're going to give away some prizes, right, Joy?